Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. This is the last game I'm going to be casting of the current patch. This is just before the uh, new patch with the new monster, the Charybdis, for the Dark Elves drops. We're going to be taking a look at one last 2v2. This time, uh, if you remember my last 2v2, it was Tomb Kings and... Uh, Vampires versus another team. This time, though, uh, following Kotep's demise, Team Undead has been split and some Skaven hijinks has occurred. You can see there are Skaven on both sides, as is always fitting for the Skaven. So, yeah, myself and Black Iron. Black Iron going to be commanding Queek Headtaker and his Skaven. I, of course, have Heinrich Kemmler and the Vampire Counts. In terms of my build here, it's exactly the same. As in the last game, we've got Skeleton Spearmen up front, backed up by Skeleton Warriors, Konigstein Stalkers in the center. Right behind them, we've got the Sternsmen, a couple more Graveguard, two Blood Knights, Varix Reavers, and the uh, Corpse Cart with the Unholy Lodestone. Uh, I believe, I don't think I actually brought the Hounds in this build, but uh, anyway, for Queek's uh, Skaven here, he's got a front line of Clan Rats with shields and some uh, Skaven Slave Spears, second line of Storm Vermin with a couple of Death Runners, three Death Runners in the center with a couple Plague Monks, uh, Queek and a Warlock Engineer, a couple of Rat Ogres juiced up to uh, rank 7 to make them have more leadership and better combat stats. And uh, yeah, that's it for us. In terms of the other side here, there's some more spooky scary skeletons being commanded by Kotep once again. Decided to get off his feet and get up on his, uh, <laughs> his uh, DJ setup here. So he is going to be indeed taking that. He's got Sandstorm, uh, the Incantation of Desiccation, the Skullstorm, and Incantation of Protection, as well as his Lich Staff, my will be done, all those goodies. Uh, he's got two Bone Giants, two uh, Skeleton Archers, one of them the Regiment of Renown, Blessed Legion. Front line is Skeleton Warriors. He's got the Kepper Guard here in, on the flank. A couple more Tomb Guard in the back with some Skeleton Spears all around. Uh, Scorpion Legion to uh, this right flank here. And then the Skaven under Lord Skrulk, banner of Clan Pestilence, of course. He's got uh, Lord Skrulk here with another Plague Priest and a Warlock Engineer. This Plague Priest here has got the Scrying Stone, Vermintide, and Wither. Skrulk himself has uh, got Wither, Vermintide as well, and Pestilent Breath. Aura of Pestilence as well as both items here. The Warlock Engineer just has the Warpstone Armor and that extra powder. We've got some Clan Rats up front backed up by Storm Vermin, Sword and Shield, a few Plague, Plague Clock Catapults and some more Clan Rat Spears in the back. So let's get this battle underway. Obviously since our opponents have a pretty sizable artillery advantage, we're going to be wanting to advance straight up the pipe. You can see those uh, <clears throat> nasty shots coming in from the Plague Clock Catapults. The uh, Bone Giants are opening up shots on the Rat Ogres, which is going to be a very good choice for them. Uh, they will do some pretty substantial damage here. Haven't finished off any unit models quite yet, but uh, definitely going to be pretty powerful. Look like a couple of clean misses there. A bit unfortunate, but uh, yeah, we're definitely going to take some heat on the way in, particularly Black Iron Skaven. But, uh, you know, we're perfectly fine to let these Clan Rats get uh, shot up. Unfortunately, a little bit over aggressive with those rat ogres. They are going to get shot up a little bit there, but uh, yeah, taking some hits to the play clock catapult as well. Again, most of this is low value Skaven infantry, so uh, it's not too bad taking losses there in terms of the approach. Uh, my army is relatively untouched. The uh, shambling skeletons slowly make making their way across the field here at the speed of this corpse cart, so it's uh, definitely going to take some time. Meanwhile, Clan Pestilence, uh, their heroic cores come forward quite a bit, so we're going to try and push forward and isolate them if we can. Queek, obviously, will outduel uh, Lord Scroll one on one, no problem. Meanwhile, the uh, Dire Pack here, who I had forgotten, I didn't think I brought them, but they were hidden in the corner there. They're going to be probing for holes, trying to get in and around and get on these Plague Claw catapults if possible. But uh, Skaven doing a good job bringing back the Storm Vermin in a protected position. We're not going to be able to get through there. Um, but the mainline engagement just about to kick underway. You can see Skaven Slave Spears immediately fleeing from the uh, spooky, scary Skeleton Warriors who are going to be charging through. Skaven units are going to be very li liable to route, especially with the uh, Contaminate debuff from that Plague Claw Catapult. But uh, 
plague monks and clan rats uh, and uh, death runner is going to get in here Ooh, looks like uh, scroll overextending himself a little bit here actually providing a very nice rod of corruption draining out a whole bunch of these high value uh, death runners and uh, other units here there's some clan rats as well a warp fire thrower i failed to catch earlier so just all the skaven uh, meeting against each other clan pestilence versus clan moors classic matchup uh, meanwhile, the uh, Bone Men are meeting as well. You can see Skeleton Warriors clashing from the Tomb Kings and Vampire Counts. They are contrasting styles, looking very cool. We've actually got in the center Konigstein Stalkers against the uh, Scorpion Legion here. Skull Storm coming down. Uh, very good stuff. All, all Blood Knights are pushing around the flank here. Just kind of keeping the Dire Pack in reserve again. Didn't really find a good opening where I wanted. So, uh, meanwhile, over here in this pocket, we've got a Wither going down on the one side here. Um, but yeah, the overall, the infantry for Clan Moor is going to be far superior here if they can just break through. Uh, these Warp Fire Throwers may get some damage done, but uh, over here, Krell has been summoned up and is fighting this Bone Giant here with the support of some Rat Ogres, of course, uh, from Clan Moors here. And uh, yeah, Krell with his anti-large armor piercing will definitely be able to put a beat down on that Bone Giant, especially with some support here. We're going to get these Blood Knights up and try and shoot this gap and occupy this Bone Giant as well. Very nice Warp Lightning coming down from the Warlock Engineer there. Uh, you can see the Warlock Engineer uh, for the other side applying that Drain Effect. Both sides having that same Drain Effect with the Warp Stone Armor there, but uh, Blood Knight's going to come through, occupy this Bone Giant momentarily. Radovers, Kemler, and Krell pushing through, not allowing this Bone Giant to fire, and it's actually pretty close to crumbling at this point. Realm of Souls going off for the Tomb Kings. You can see I tried to break through this uh, huge mass of Storm Vermin and Clan Rats here. Uh, we did some damage, but uh, unfortunately took quite a bit of damage in return. But Dire Pack probably going to crumble away. We might be able to salvage those Blood Knights, but uh, Varix Reavers in the meanwhile have managed to break through and get into the back lines of our opponent here. Going to be finishing off these uh, Warp Fire Throwers as they try and flee up the hill. Meanwhile, the uh, Forces of Clan Moors have won that infantry engagement pretty decisively. You can see Queek in here mixing it up with Lord Skrulk and the uh, Warlock Engineer. Yeah, like I said before, Queek will definitely take Skrulk to task no problem, so uh, looks like he has actually dropped his attack order at the moment, but uh, rest assured he will be taking care of Lord Skrulk shortly. Meanwhile, over in this other pocket, this Bone Giant finally goes down here. There's still one more, but uh, Krell cackling in here with his Rat Ogre buddies. Uh, laughing over, the, over their victory, but uh, we're going to have to push forward. Another very nice uh, Skull Storm or Sand Storm. I can never tell the difference coming through. We're going to shoot another gap here and get in on the uh, Skeleton Archers with the Blood Knights. Occupy the Blessed Legion with the other uh, huge group of, that's pushing forward here with the Rat Ogres, Krell, and more. Uh, very nice uh, Overcast Invocation, and the Realm of Souls also going off, so healing on both sides. There's all kinds of uh, shenanigans going on. Yeah, the Plague Claw Catapults, though, still secure for the most part. Uh, the Varix Reavers have been chasing off a whole bunch of routing units, now going to charge into some Storm Vermin. We're going to do quite well initially and do some great shock damage to those Storm Vermin, but uh, unfortunately I'm going to not be able to pull away in a timely fashion there. I do forget to micro a little bit, but a lot of regrouping Skaven for Clan Moors coming back into the fight. The Heroic Core is relatively healthy, and he's been able to see off Lord Skrulk. I actually think he took down Lord Skrulk somewhere in this pile of rats here. But uh, anyway, Kepler Guard doing quite well. They're fighting against Grave Guard. Uh, it's going to be a pretty atrocious trade, but the Kepler Guard will definitely win there. Meanwhile, Kotep in the back line racked up 231 kills so far. Just been continuously dropping that double vortex. And in a very high model count game like this, uh, our opponent started with 3,000. We had 2,800 unit models, so just a huge battle in terms of the numbers of uh, infantry brought here. But uh, yeah, you can see we're pushing through on the Tomb Kings, inundating a lot of their ranged units here. Ushabti have been summoned, but uh, Krell's in here mixing it up, helping speed their passing, and uh, also helping to deal with some of the rats in his pocket as well. Fortunately, Krell is almost down. He's uh, qu quite close to his healing cap, actually at his healing cap, only about 200 hit points left. So yeah, Krell will be disintegrating very soon, but he's been able to get quite a bit of work done. Uh, 34 kills and helping take down that bone giant, which was very key. But uh, yeah, ooh, another brutal sandstorm coming down, just ripping through the Skaven ranks there, racking up a whole bunch of kills for Akatep there. Absolutely brutal. This other Bone Giant still online as well, so the risk is not quite over yet. Ooh, it looks like one of those Blood Knights actually got caught by that shot there. In the back line, we're trying to finish off the Scorpion Legion here uh, with the Konigstein Stalkers and uh, the Sternsmen as well. 
A lot of the Clan Moors rats are not wanting to hold their leadership together. The same can be said of the Clan Pestilence rats as well. A lot of them are pretty shaky at this point. You can see trying to pull away my Varix Reavers here, but uh, they are crumbling away. So things are honestly not looking too great at this point, but there's still plenty of battle left to play. We're uh, getting in on this uh, Bone Giant here with the Blood Knights. Can be trying to do as much work as possible, but uh, it's very late at this point. We've got uh, almost an XP chevron on these Blood Knights. They're about at their healing cap as well, so if we can keep around, keep them around and cycle charge this uh, Bone Giant a bit, we should be able to get some good work done. Uh, right now, not getting the damage that we need to, but uh, Kemmler fighting heroically in here as well, providing that nice Chaos Tomb Blade. We've also got the uh, Corpse Cart still online and relatively healthy as well. A whole bunch of rats coming back from route for another big timing push, so although things seem pretty grim at the moment, it's not too far out of our favor. Very nice Warp Lightning coming down right in front of Kemmler's face, just blasting out a whole bunch of uh, zombies, and ske uh, s zombies uh, skeletons and rats, rather, uh, that were standing in that pocket. Looks like we're going to be getting some kind of summon here, and uh, Heinrich pulling up some zombies there to help uh, apply a rear charge penalty and hopefully get these Skeleton Spearmen to crumble, maybe get these Storm Vermin to rout as well. Looking pretty unlikely at this point, but uh, very critically, these Blood Knights are still alive, still working away at this Bone Giant. My opponent hasn't been able to effectively pull away. Uh, Black Iron's Engineer is actually surrounded completely here but even though he's routed he still counts as being in melee so he's still going to be applying that drain effect to all the units in this pocket which is kind of hilarious and uh, quite beneficial for us i'm sure our opponent's not too happy about it but uh, going to be pulling those blood knights back not wanting to get bogged down by the uh, skaven slave spears and more with the infantry support the bone giant will do quite well there but uh, yeah we're finishing off a few more skaven units here and there uh, the last of the Tomb Kings are still just fighting in this very pitched battle here with uh, Kemmler. And we've got the Sternsmen and some of the other regiments of renown as well fighting through this pocket. So, very attritious fight, you know, uh, skeletons on skeletons, Tomb Kings versus, uh, versus uh, vampires. When both sides are unbreakable, it can be very tricky. You can see the balance power definitely turning in our opponent's favor at this point. But, uh, like I said, they're continuing to chase this uh, Warlock Engineer. And it's definitely important to finish him off. But all these units are being drained as well. Ooh, and that uh, Bone Giant continuously firing away at those Blood Knights, trying to finish him off. They're very close to their healing cap, but probably could take one more invocation or stand by this uh, Corpse Cart. Similar effects, but uh, Kemmler himself is at his healing cap. Uh, a lot of the Tomb Kings are crumbled away, though. I mean, the Kepler Guard are gone. Pretty much all the Tomb Kings infantry is gone. It's really just Kotep and this Bone Giant that are left for their forces, and then all these uh, Haggard Skaven infantry here that are very tattered the Plague Clock Catapult crews and so on. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be very close. And another brutal Skull Storm coming down. Oh, man, just look at the devastation it's causing there. Very, very good stuff. Um, and at this late stage, that was almost backbreaking. But uh, we've been able to pull the balance of power back a little bit with most of those Tomb King units crumbling away. And now we're going to be kind of forming up for the final push here. You can see I'm fanning out with the Grave Guard and the Skeletons. And uh, we're going to try and push through and finish things off here. We do still have some Blood Knights online over here critically. Unfortunately, Kemmler is currently on the receiving end of some of those uh, Blood Knight shots. Uh, Kotep also firing away from his Roomba as well, doing some nice damage in there. But uh, yeah, at this point, Kemmler's still alive very critically. The uh, Rat Ogres come in for a nice flank charge on the Storm Vermin. Going to be doing some nice shock armor piercing damage. And uh, then the Grave Guard are going to follow up in the flank there. You can see the Grave Guard inundating uh, all the units here. Obviously, the Skaven uh, Clan Rats won't last too long against something like the Sternsmen. But the uh, Bone Giant fighting on top is definitely going to help there. We're going to bring the Corpse Cart up into range to start healing and applying that Vigor Mortis as well. And uh, here comes Kemmler, who is crumbling. But I figured, hey, it's uh, probably good to try and get the Chaos Tomb Blade. I wanted that Undeath Resurgent as well to give some extra melee defense here. And uh, now the last of the Blood Knights are coming to try and finish off this Bone Giant here as Kemmler just gets knocked around. And uh, yeah, Kemmler's very, very low at this point. Probably going to go down. But uh, between the Vigor Mortis and the Blood Knights, I figure we can probably take down this Bone Giant. One more Zombie Summon is all I can muster out of Kemmler before he goes down. And uh, that is going to put some more unit models on the field and most importantly help protect the few rat ogres that are left here who uh, thankfully due to their chevronage have stuck around due to their higher leadership. They are going to be routing at this point it looks like but uh, 
yeah, they stuck around for quite a while and were able to get some good damage done. A lot of the Plan Pestilence units routing at this point as well. So, uh, yeah, it's very, very close. Kemmler is about to go down here, but uh, we might be able to pull things back at this point. The Blood Knight's fighting the Bone Giant. Good old Kemmler uh, waddling his way through here. I'm not 100% sure what uh, what happened to old Queek, buddy, but uh, ooh, it looks like he's actually routed off here. But uh, critically, Queek is still alive. Otherwise, I doubt a lot of these units would be fighting. But uh, here comes some Skaven Slave Spears to support. Uh, true champions of the Skaven going to run in here and help support the Blood Knights. With their pitiful anti-large bonus, they may actually be able to do a tiny bit of damage here, especially because they're getting hit by that Vigor Mortis, giving them actually passable melee stats. I say passable, they're still absolutely abysmal, but uh, yeah, they got terrified almost immediately. But they did distract a few of the attack animations for that uh, Bone Giant there, and it is going to be going down here. You can see it's crumbling. The Blood Knights are still steady in terms of their leadership. And, uh, oh man, that Blood Knight just had a bad day. But uh, the others still fighting, trying to finish off this Bone Giant. The uh, Corpse Cart's still here, and the Sternsmen and the Zombies are the last things that are left. You can see Queek, though, uh, did come back from round. He's just kind of chilling in the woods over there. But uh, Kotep at this point is trying to Roomba the Zombies and the Sternsmen, and it's just not working out. That Bone Giant, once that goes down, we should be able to bring those Blood Knights back. And you can see the Balance of Power finally, decisively turning in our favor. Bone Giant is uh, on its last legs here, and uh, very soon, yep, there it goes, and we're going to switch the Blood Knights immediately over onto Kotep, try and finish him off here, looks like we're actually swinging up and around there, zombies that have been summoned are just about gone, the Sternsmen are still fighting here somehow with 24 unit models despite the fact that they are crumbling, and uh, the Corpse Cart with that regeneration definitely helping them keep them in the fight. Here come the last few Blood Knights here. There's literally like four Blood Knights fighting in here, but it's going to be enough, especially with the Skaven Slave Spears also coming through to uh, finish off Kotep here. And yeah, man, what a close fight and great way to see it out the patch. Uh, definitely looking forward to diving into the new patch. I mean, there wasn't a ton that changed, but uh, Bretonia and the Empire definitely got some interesting changes. And of course, I want to take a look at the Charybdis for the Dark Elves. So look forward to that. We'll just soak up the cinematic action of Kotep on his Roomba, trying to finish things off here. The Blood Knights, you know, all three or four that are left of them are going to be finishing things out here. So, very fun battle. Well played to everyone involved. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, yeah, Skaven hijinks leads to undead fighting undead. And uh, this time, the vampires and uh, Queek, I guess the red team, you could say, ended up coming out on top. So, very fun battle. Well played to everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Super, super fun. Can't say uh, enough how awesome of a battle that was to play. So, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. In terms of the breakdown, uh, Graveguard did quite well. 210, 66, and 155 on the Sternsmen. Critically, those Sternsmen stuck around until the late game and were able to help finish things off. Uh, the Blood Knights, in certain aspects, did quite well, especially that one that, again, stuck around until the late game. 83 kills and some XP chevrons. Uh, the Variks Reavers also helped clean up quite a few units as well. Heinrich Kemmler himself contributing 63 kills, and Krell, of course, being the absolute powerhouse that he was. In terms of Black Iron Battles here, you can see that Warlock Engineer just dropping those uh, continuous Warp Lightnings, um, really getting some good damage done, and of course the big Drain Effect he was applying as well. Queek able to snipe out some high-value targets, took down Lord Skrulk and the other leadership for the Clan Pestilence Force, so that was very key. In winning that infantry fight against the Clan Pestilence Force uh, definitely helped. The Plague Claw Catapults, though, each racked up quite a few kills. 179 in XP Chevron, 219, no Chevron here, but uh, Warp Fire Throws ended up being a little bit of a rough investment. Uh, they definitely didn't pay out. Uh, in terms of Black Irons, Rat Ogres, the ones that stuck around until the late game definitely helped out quite a bit there. 110 kills, very solid. Uh, in terms of the Tomb King player here, Kotep with 510 kills, holy cow, between the double vortex and uh, dropping the shots from his DJ rig there. Man, quite impressive. The Tomb Guard also, 108, 106, and 106 uh, with the Kepper Guard included, so very impressive stuff. The Bone Giants were really where the Tomb King player went wrong, I think, uh, against the two, you know, very kind of wide rush factions. It can be tough for to protect a high value missile unit like that and it's kind of weird you wouldn't think that bone giants necessarily need protecting but against somebody like krell they definitely need protecting and also uh you know just 
if you can inundate them with chaff and not allow them to fire for the course of while the battle is taking place, uh, that in and of itself is generating value. So, you know, zombie summons in the back line, clan rat summons in the back line. There's a lot these two factions can do to interrupt your firing. So, ended up being a rough investment. They almost paid out, but uh, yeah, otherwise, very fun battle. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. So, every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you once again for watching, and we'll see you next time.